Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is a messy hair, don't care type of day. So if you are having some messy hair and you don't care, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. And in today's video, I have some high-end Dollar Tree Pottery Barn dupes for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Dupe number one. Theirs was a whopping $199 and I could not believe that it was this expensive because I knew that I could make it much cheaper. So to start off, I take three of these Happy Easter signs from Dollar Tree and I just clip off the handles and then the Happy Easter part is just like a paper backing I guess I guess it's not really a backing but it's just paper so they're always uneven and I just took my large sanding sponge and I just sanded off those edges that were kind of hanging off I then vacuumed up my desk and I took this gorilla mounting putty and I put two dots or globs whatever you want to call it on either side of my quilting ruler because when we do this next step it is going to make sure that our quilting ruler doesn't slide but I just take my ruler um, that I got from Dollar Tree and I mark out the middle all the way down the sign so I put one mark at the top one mark in the middle and one mark at the bottom and then I always measure these signs because they're never square and because it wasn't square I marked where it was uneven all the way down and then I just cut that little edge off next I take my quilting ruler and I um, lay it down and then I run my utility knife along that edge a few times and then I just take that off. Next I once again basically we're scoring this line and then I go right next to that line v pretty close but not close and like not very close if that makes sense and I also make another score line that way um, this kind of looks like faux wood and then once I have them scored then I just run my knife along that middle edge and it just pulls up the top layer I then take my stylus and I just kind of scratch in between there again this is just going to make it look like wood and give it this really nice effect that you're not going to be able to tell that this is just a Dollar Tree sign if that makes any sense whatsoever so once I had all three of those uh, boards scored or the line down the middle whatever you would like to call it I take some large popsicle sticks and I glue those right down the seams to put this all together to make one big sign next I take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree I fill in those holes and then I just take my knife along the sides of the signs that I had butt together to make one big sign because they were glued together so closely I wanted all of this to look cohesive so I didn't want those to look too close together whereas the lines that we scored were too far apart if that makes sense I then just gave it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint and I take my pieces of poplar and I just measure out a frame for this. Now the way that I do this, I lay one piece down, mark it on one side, I then lay a piece down on the other side and mark it on the actual sign. That way I can cut down the middle pieces perfectly. Once I had those pieces cut down and I clamped them into place, I then took a scrap piece of poplar, laid it down the middle like we're going to create an X. I marked those angle cuts and then once I had those cut, then I lay the cross piece and lay another scrap piece on top of the cross piece. That way I can evenly cut the middle of this as well again if that makes any sense and then I also marked the corner angles once again 
Now I use a big saw to cut my pieces, but you can find miter boxes for fairly cheap at Home Depot, Walmart, any place like that. Um, you can definitely cut these down very easily with a miter box, but I'm lazy and I like it the easiest way possible. So it's definitely worth it to invest in a bigger saw, but like I said, a miter box a miter box is just it works just as fine i then like to label my pieces as well as on the board that way they can go right back exactly where i had them and cut them down perfectly to fit so and i also label the back of the pieces so i just like started at the top and did one two three four for the um frame and then for the cross pieces i just kind of made a little diagram in the middle for myself again so that way this fits together seamlessly once we go to glue it all together i then stained my pieces with I believe it was American Walnut, or no, it's Special Walnut, sorry about that. Um, I stained my pieces with Special Walnut, and then I just lay them out wherever the diagram told me to, just to once again make sure that they all fit together. I like to do this before I glue anything, because if you just start gluing without like putting it back together, you're going to run into some issues. So once I had it laid out, perfectly then I do just go in with some hot glue and I glue these pieces down. Once I had my pieces glued down, then I do just take some green painter's tape and I just pull off eight pieces. I clip the ends straight. Why? I don't really know because in the end it doesn't really matter. But um, I start by just laying them out where I think would look right. And then I measure each side to make sure that they are nice and even. Now, I think this probably would have worked out better if you're sign is square which my my sign was not square which in the end it looks okay i don't really know if i like it very much you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think but like i said i believe if this sign was square then it would have looked much better but again i start by just laying out um, my tape in two lines on each side of the sign so there's four sides um, and then once I had all eight of those pieces laid down, then I do go in with eight more cross pieces and you're going to make kind of like a V on the ends of these lines. If this is making no sense, you can see what I'm doing here. Um, but once I had all of that taped out, then I do go in with my ink Waverly chalk paint and give it two good coats. Next, I pull back that tape and I reveal these beautiful crisp lines. This is my favorite part, you guys. I think that's why I love chalk couture so much because when you pull that transfer back and you see those crisp images, it's it's just so satisfying. If you guys have tried chalk couture and that's your favorite part as well, let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't tried it, let me know as well. So once I pull that tape back, then I just kind of follow those lines on the side of the poplar pieces just so that way I could paint over them so that um, this kind of looks like it's stamped onto the middle of this piece. And at first I was like unsure of this, you guys. So this is supposed to look kind of like a quilter's star, I believe it's called. But I do know that this pattern is really big in kind of like the primitive farmhouse. Um, so I did want to try something a little bit different yet again. There's a lot of changes coming to this channel. And I am going to start stepping outside the box. I have a fun challenge coming. So I can't wait for you guys to see what that is. I do um, announce that in this video. Um, but once I had the top portion marked out and taped off then I do go ahead and paint that as well and then once I pull back that tape then I take a very tiny brush and I just connect the lines on the side of the poplar now once this was done I was like okay something doesn't look quite right I couldn't figure it out and I now figured it out that 
if you have your V's a little bit deeper, then it might have looked better, but I still like the way that it turned out. I just wish that I would have paid attention to the inspiration piece a little bit better, but hey, it is what it is. Sometimes not everything comes out perfect, um, but I do tape that off again and just make those sides a little bit thicker. So if you do make this, I do recommend to make the sides thicker and make your V just a little bit deeper. Once I had that completed, then I just go in with some touch-ups with my white Waverly chalk paint and just tup, tut, <laughs> I just touch up any part that had a little bit of black paint um, that went outside the lines. So I'm going to start doing this on my channel, let you guys what I learned when doing these projects. So make sure your Dollar Tree signs are square. If they're not square, cut them down to be square before putting them together. Your lines should be a little bit thicker and make sure you tape it off with painter's tape to ensure you have nice, crisp, and clean lines. And I made this at $9, you guys. $199 to $9, you can't beat it. There's no questions asked. I would much rather make it than buy it. And although it was outside of my comfort zone, I really do like the way that it turned out. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. I am so honored and grateful that you're here. If you love DIY decor on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, and like I said, farmhouse decor, because that is my specialty. Again, I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button, and then you just tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. And every single week on my channel, I share with you guys my earrings of the week. So for this week, my friend Alexis, she has been a longtime supporter of mine. We chat back and forth on Instagram, so if you're not following me over there, definitely go follow me over there. I also do giveaways over there. I am a little bit more personal over there, so definitely go check me out at All Things Crafty 2 if that's something you're interested in, like I said. Um, but she hand makes these, you guys. They're absolutely gorgeous. She sent Sophia and I both a keychain as well as another pair of earrings that I absolutely love as well. I will leave all her information in the description box. She's a very small business. I love to support small businesses and show her some love. And with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Okay friends, moving on to dupe number two. There's the small was 59 and the large was 79. So this was super duper easy. To start off, I just take two candles or I should say candle holders from Dollar Tree and I lay out my half inch square dowel rod that is linked in my Amazon store in the description box. And I just kind of mark where the um, square dowel meets the edges of the candle holder. Once I had that marked, then I take my little mini miter saw and I cut that down. And then I mark and I cut down the exact same size of that piece that I just cut. Now these miter shears do work, but because these square dowels are really, really thick and strong, um, it's much, much easier to either cut it with a miter box or your mini saw or even a big saw. Um, but I do the exact same thing that I do for the large candle holder than I do for the small one. So once I had that measured out and both of the pieces cut, then I lay one of the square dowels on top of the other, mark it where it would be kind of like an X, and then I cut those down as well. I also make sure to measure each side to make sure that it is nice and even. Once I had those cut down, then I just take my little mini sanding sponge. I believe this is called a zip sander. And I just sand down those edges to make sure that they're not gonna splinter and they're nice and smooth. I then take this self-healing cutting mat from Dollar Tree. I lay my longer square dowel rod down and then I glue the edge of the smaller one that we just cut and I put that right in the middle and repeat that on the other side.
once I had both of my little X's completed, then I do just lay the candle holder on top of the X. I take another scrap piece of my square dowel and kind of just measure how far up the bottom that I want it to go. And to my liking, I mean, there's no specific measurement. It's just basically how you like it to look. Um, I didn't really follow the exact picture because I felt that it was a little bit too low for the way that I wanted it to look. But if you like it as short as the picture shows, then that's totally up to you. You can just cut them a little bit shorter, but I do go ahead and I cut down four pieces the exact same length and then glue them kind of like parallel onto the sides of this candle holder and I do leave the candle holder um, placed on top of the X while I glue these down to make sure that we have a nice tight fit and then once I have it glued on then I take it off and I make sure that it's nice and evenly pushed down so I do just pull that off and I also kind of pull off any glue strings that may be left behind after gluing these down. So again, once I have both of those finished, then I take that same exact stain that we used in the last project and I stain these pieces. I did use the stain special walnut and if you want these if you want your stain to be a little bit deeper and darker, then just let it sit and soak up into the wood while it dries. But if you want it a little bit lighter, then once you lay your stain down, you can go in with a paper towel, cloth, whatever you have on hand, and just kind of soak up the excess of that stain. And then that was it, you guys. This was really quick and easy. What I learned was that the half inch dowel rods are much easier to cut with a mini saw, a regular saw, or a miter box. You wanna lay the dowel over the dowel and mark it to ensure you're cutting in the right place and use a self-healing cutting mat to line up the pieces so that you can make sure that you have them nice and even. I do have a typo. It's not a fourth inch dowel, it is a half inch dowel. And look at the way these turned out, you guys. This literally took me about 10 to 15 minutes to put together and the price you cannot beat it. So I want to thank Judy times two and Lisa for buying me craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to buy me craft supplies and get a shout out in my next video, go to the link in the description box below. You don't have to support me monetarily. By coming back week after week, you support me. If you like this video, subscribe. There's so many different ways that you can support your favorite creators. You don't have to support us monetarily, but I appreciate every single one of you, however you support me. I also wanted to remind you guys of the giveaway. It ends June 25th at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely make sure you have your notifications turned on and you go back to my um, Americana video to see everything you need to do. And that's where you're going to comment and enter. Okay, friends, dupe number three, theirs was $249. And it's this cute little plant stand that I wanted to put my own spin on. So I start off with these little boxes from Dollar Tree. This is the medium size, and I put together three of them with some hot glue two times. So six all together, three at the bottom, three for the top. I then take some large stir sticks that I get from Home Depot for 98 cents a pack, and I put them together with a clamp at the top, and then I take my square and I just mark out where I'm going to cut so that this sits evenly on the table, ground, wherever you're going to put it. And I do kind of show you here that I do cut them opposite if that makes sense. I don't even know how to explain it, but for the back part, you're going to angle it up and for the front part, you're going to angle your cut down. Next, I sand all those numbers off and then I stain it with it with the exact same stain that I stained everything else with, the special walnut, because I wanted all of this stuff to look nice and cohesive. 
once I had them stained and they were dry, being dry is key, especially when you're using oil-based stain, then once again, I put them together at the top with some hot glue. Next, I take our little shelves, and I have to admit, you guys, I put the bottom on first and then like put both sides onto the bottom and then try to put the top on. Definitely put both of your sides on. You want to make sure that it's nice and even with a level. I secure it down with some hot glue and then I go in with the top part, but I will tell you that it's going to be much easier if you put both sides on and then attach the other side piece but of course i always do things backwards but that's the beauty of this i get to figure all this stuff out and then tell you guys the easiest way to make it um, but like i said i attached both sides making sure that they were even with a level with some hot glue and then once i had those both of the sides glued down then I pull out some wood screws. I drill, I pre-drill holes into these. That way my wood is not going to split. And then I secure both sides with a wood screw. And I do believe they're really, really, or I know that they're pretty short. I got a big pack on Amazon. I will put it in my Amazon store for you guys. Um, but I wanted to make sure that this stays together really nicely. I think that it would have held with hot glue, but I just wanted to be sure and I did I did screw one screw on the top of the back part and one screw at the bottom of the front part if that makes any sense but you can see where I screwed it and then um, because the top of this is not even um, when you go to put the top shelf on I did just take some scrap stir stick I glued it to the front and to the back and this is why when I tell you what I learned I'm gonna say make sure that your stir sticks are identical on each side because then you're just gonna have to put a scrap piece in the back and it's gonna not look as stupid which in the end it didn't because I covered it up with some stain but hey you live and you learn I then took that same exact square dowel that we made our candle holders with after I had glued down the top shelf again making sure that it's even with my little level and screwing the top part in as well then I measure out the dowel for the top I stain that I glue that down and then I also cover up the screw um, the heads of the screws with some of my truffle chalk paint and last but not least, I wanted to make a few little decorations to put in my little plant stand. So I mainly put plants in here, but for this little tiny pitcher, I love this little thing so much. I got it at an antique store and I took this little jar just to kind of fill in one of the shelves. Um, I do just take my little mini chalk couture transfers and I just transfer those little images on with some black chalk paste and I will leave all the chalk couture products that I use in one link in the description box. Feel free to add and subtract from your cart because it'll put all the stuff into your cart, but that doesn't mean that you have to get everything. I just like to put it all in one place so that way if anybody is looking for something specific that I used, it's all right there. And this is the magic of chalk paste. If you mess up, you can just wipe it off and do it over or like me, I kind of went off the side with my chalk paste. So I just took a baby wipe and I cleaned that up.
Okay friends, so what I learned with this project is make sure your stir sticks are identical on both sides. If you're screwing this together, pre-drill your holes to prevent splitting and attach the top and the bottom shelf first and then attach the one side because it's going to make your life 10 times easier. And I made this at 8 dollars you guys that is it eight dollars look how amazing this thing turned out i love it so so much i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna put it um, but that's always a challenge because i have so much stuff and i don't know if this is my favorite project you guys can let me know in the comments down below which project is your favorite if you haven't subscribed already make sure you click that red subscribe button you don't want to miss any dollar tree moments or any farmhouse diy moments anything really um, i am going to start doing hauls i did one last week so if you guys want to check that out you can find that in my videos and i am just so excited that you guys are here also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I did want to let you guys know, if you are a creator, I am starting a new challenge. It is called the Subscriber Requested Challenge, where every other month, July, September, November, etc., I will put up a community post in the beginning of the month asking what my subscribers would like to see from me. And then I will pick what I want to make from those requests. And then I will post a video Monday, July 19th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you are a creator and you want to join in on this challenge, let me know. I would love to have you guys. I already have a bunch of people joining in. Everybody's so excited because this is something really different. You guys know that I stand by being different on my channel. I don't want to craft like anybody else be like anybody else i just want to be myself and i want to give back to all of my people who i love so much so with all that being said i love all you guys so so much and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye